Hey everyone, so I thought I would do a video on multi-tracking, which uh, gives you some tips on how to choose tracks for multi-tracking. And what I mean when I say multi-tracking is running two songs um, at the same time consistently through your set. So uh, that has the effect of allowing you to mix in a way that people are really not going to hear what you're doing. Um, if you have two tracks going on all the time, you're using a third deck uh, as one track ends to maintain two tracks running, uh, you're able to mix in a way that uh, basically it's a lot harder for the listener to tell where one track ends and one track begins. So uh, for the purposes of this video, understand I only have two turntables here. I don't play on tractor, so I'm going to give you some tips on how to select tracks that work well together for multi-tracking purposes. Um, but I won't actually be able to show you here what it looks like to uh, play on three turntables because I only own two. But you'll be able to get an idea. And the main, again, the main idea and point here is to understand how to pick tracks that will work well together for multi-tracking. So this is typically going to be um, for techno or tech house tracks. It's a little bit harder to multi-track with uh, tracks that are deep house or progressive house where there's a lot more melodies going on. So some basic, um, very basic pointers initially, obviously a big no-no is two vocal tracks because you're not going to have vocals uh, going over one another because that almost never sounds good. It's a very rare case that you'd find two tracks with vocals that work together. They'd have to be staggered. Um, here's a track called uh, Far From Lazy, uh, featuring, um, it's actually, it's by Mr. V and Christian uh, Niels. This is the original mix. So the track sounds like this. It is a vocal track. Okay. So what I noticed about this track, like I liked this track the first time I heard it. I liked the vocals. I thought it had kind of a, a funky beat, but I noticed this track is missing a little bit in the low end. It doesn't have a very powerful kick. It doesn't have any like long ringing bass hits. Okay, so contrast that to a song like this, Lee Vandowski, this track's called Bango Bango. Got a pretty playful bass line, pretty chunky, uh, like thick sounding bass. And it's a relatively constant uh, kind of track. It doesn't have a lot of huge variations in it. So typically, if a track is a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more simple, that might be a suggestion that it's a track that you'll be able to multi-track with well. So that beat carries on for a while. And then you actually, you do have some female vocals, but they're vocals you can mix with the vocals in the other track, the Mr. V track, because they're not actually spoken words. They're, it's more of a humming. So it's really more of a melody. Here it comes. Okay, happens again during the breakdown. So what I'm getting at is that these two tracks are going to complement each other because this track's a bit more busy, it's got a bit more going on, but it's kind of missing uh, the, that low end kick. It doesn't, it's not that heavy in the bass uh, frequency. So I want to find a track that's got a bit more of a chunky bass line to give the sound more teeth when you're playing them together. So uh, let's see how they're going to sound. And also we should talk about EQing. Um, a lot of people, when they're multi-tracking, you, you may want to bring in certain emphasis from, from the tracks. Uh, so you may be wanting the highs from one track more. So you may have the mid-range and the high, high end frequency on your mixer turned up. You may have the bass uh, frequency turned a little bit down. Or if you really want to boost the bass signal in one track, maybe you're going to have the mid-range and the highs turned a bit down and the bass kicked up a bit. So 
when you're multi-tracking, you don't have to have all the EQ knobs on your channels at 12 o'clock. Um, and we'll see how it sounds once I get these two going. So let's start the Mr. V track. Then I'm gonna mix in. So this track is basically at its beginning. It's just hit the pickup there after the first like maybe 32 measures. And we're gonna bring in Bango Bango from the beginning. because I've played these tracks together before, I find that these tracks actually complement each other very well. So I tend to run them all with uh, all the cues at 12 o'clock. Or if I just want the bass from Mr. V, I can turn down the mids in the high end. Not the bass of it. So you also want to pay attention to what's going on in the tracks in terms of breakdowns and builds so that you can have the tracks work together. So what I had done there was the track over here on the right deck, Mr. V had a breakdown where there was less kick, less bass and more of a vocal breakdown. And so during that breakdown before the drop and the kick came back, what I did was I cleared away some of the low end from Bango Bango, which is the track on the left deck, using a high pass filter. And just as the drop came, I sweeped the filter back down to zero right in the last four beats. So that's a technique I like to use a lot. So let's just like run through that one more time. What I'm doing on this deck is running the high pass filter and I'm counting in the four, four last beats before the drop on the track over here. So what I'm doing is in my head, we go one, two, three, four, clean. Or you can just cut the filter out immediately. Two, three, four. Okay, so let's just. Let's cue that back up. So. This breakdown over here starts here. Okay, so that's the part of the track here where I'm saying you don't want this track overpowering this breakdown. So that's why I'm suggesting either you're going to take the volume down or you're going to bring the high pass filter. Do something so that the track's energy levels are mirroring one another. So all alone, this build and drop sounds like this. Okay, so let's mix them both again together and I'll show you what I mean by letting this track work with this track using a high pass filter to throw the beat back in uh, when you get this track uh, hitting its drop.
My bad, I missed the drop. <laughs> Let's try that again. another point too which is how to mix in um, the second track so like if you're playing live and you're multi-tracking you're gonna have two tracks already playing um, and so one track perhaps is ending say this track is coming in now you want to bring in the second track over here right so when you're multi-tracking it's a bit easier to get away with just throwing a track in a little more hot like instead of mixing it in slow so the, when I first mixed these two I brought this track in this track over here a little slower, um, but what you might do as well is something like this. Just give this up. Two, three, four, one. Okay. Is you may wait until the first queen break and then initial. Uh, kick off, kick off to the track or initial drop, and you may throw this track in. Maybe not at a hundred percent volume, but you may just throw it in instead of mixing it in slow. So let's try that. third deck here, there's another track playing that's finishing. That track too should be taken onto a filter or a volume down right now. Okay, so that doesn't sound so bad, right? So, again, imagining that a third track is just ending about now. That's a pretty sneaky way to mix, right? So when you're playing techno or tech house, like this is tech house, you can get away with, uh, you know, really making it difficult for the listener to hear what you're doing when you're mixing, which of course is the end goal. So let's try a couple techno tracks. Two of my favorite techno tracks. I don't play that much techno anymore, but okay. People understand by Adam Bayer. Nice long nine minute song. Nice dark track. Long breakdown.
that build, that breakdown, but I feel like that drop is kind of missing energy a bit. So, I learned when I was playing this track that if I started mixing in something else about maybe 64 measures before that breakdown starts, that I could build the energy and then let the two tracks run out together, which was good for multi-tracking. matching yet. When you're multi-tracking, obviously you cannot stress the importance of beat matching enough because you're letting these tracks run for three, four, maybe five minutes together live on two channels at maybe full volume. So your beat match needs to be tight because if it's off over that course of time, people are really going to notice. And especially if the tracks, if you're using CDJs uh, and you know they're not perfectly timed because yes, they're digital, but nothing's perfect you will find that some tracks will start to slip out of sync even after you've done the initial beat match. You need to check carefully, and if that means checking in your headphones to make sure your beat match is still good and tight, then so be it, because in really loud clubs, unless you're willing to crank the monitors really, really loud in the booth, uh, it might be easier to check on your beat match just by lifting up your headphones a bit. Whatever you want to do, but just make sure the beats stay tight. got both these tracks going now. The Adam Bayer track is about 75% volume on the EQs. That's how that track sounds alone. That's how the Paul Moosberg track sounds alone. breakdown coming up over here soon and remember what I said about we want the tracks to work together so if that tracks on a breakdown I don't want this track to, you know banging away at full volume so I'm going to use a high pass filter again with the Adam Bayer track there to give myself a bit of extra time. Now I've got the Adam Bayer track on the high pass filter, but I can play around with it. I can take the filter out here and there on one beat, here one kick loud kind of mess with people a bit, right?
nice big juicy drop. Again, Adam Bear track sounds like this. Nicole Mutiver like this. tips on multi-tracking. Uh, I would recommend starting out with techno. It's pretty easy with techno because techno is just mostly pretty percussive. Uh, it doesn't have a whole ton of uh, you know, vocals or conflicting melodies. And once you uh, have some success with multi-tracking with techno, you can try with uh, some tech house, maybe try with one track with some lyrics, or at least a couple vocal samples, something like that. And uh, you can have a lot of fun too, like throwing, you know, one volume fader in and out fast with, uh, you know, filter cuts when you've got two or three decks going. There's a lot of fun you can have. 